So that allows them to attach this. Now the number one is attached. carboxy groups decarboxylate. So we don't need to worry about losing this over here. And now you can see why it was okay to start by adding a substituent with an ester, because we were going to hydrolyze it into a carboxy group anyway. This is actually a good trick for synthesis. If you're trying to make something with a carboxy group, you probably don't want to do it by adding a carboxy group, because those have complicated reactivity, because they have acid-base reactivity. Even if you're trying to make a carboxy group, in many cases you want to start by adding an ester, because it's so easy to turn esters into carboxy groups. And now I guess uh, we're done. That would be our synthesis. Okay. So when we learned about carboxylic acids and acid derivatives, we said that carboxylic acids were very, very similar to carboxylic acid derivatives because they all do the addition elimination reaction. However, now we've seen that there is one important difference between carboxylic acid derivatives and carboxylic acids because carboxylic acids are harder to work with because they have competing acid-base reactions. They, don't, they, do, they do sometimes do uh, additional elimination reactions, but that can compete with uh, just deprotonating the, the carboxylic acid. So when you're trying to do a synthesis, it's usually easier just to start by using esters. And you can always hydrolyze the ester into a carboxylic acid at the end. That's a, 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 an important point that a lot of students don't end up learning on the course. Esters are easier to work with than carboxylic acids, because obviously an ester is not going to, um, the, the oxygen can't deprotonate here. And then we can always turn it into the carboxy group at the end. Uh, and we saw another way that we could add groups in the Gabrielle synthesis. You don't always have to use an alkyl halide. We could do a Michael addition here. But the alkyl halide approach, I think, would be fine too. Is there ever like a situation where in the end you'd end up with an ester and a carboxy group? Then you couldn't use this trick, yeah. because when you tried to do the hydrolysis, it would hydrolyze everybody. Uh, not when you're trying to make amino acids, anyway. No, just like in, general. in general. Well, in general, that's theoretically possible. I don't know whether you guys have the tools to do that um, yet. Okay. Or uh, I guess what you would want to do is first you would put in the carboxylic acid. Uh, let's see. First you would um, put in the carbox the, an ester group and turn it into a carboxylic acid by hydrolysis. And, you and then you would put in a new ester group and not do any more hydrolyses. And that way you would have both an ester. So yeah, it, uh, I guess it wouldn't be too hard to put in both an ester and the carboxylic acid. First you put in the uh, one ester and hydrolyze it into the carboxylic acid. And then you put in another ester and don't hydrolyze it. And then you'll get one of each. So that would be a good hard synthesis problem. All right, so um, that was a little review on Gabrielle. You guys already seem very comfortable with that. Notice here that we actually started in the middle. We started with the thalamide already attached to the 1,3 dicarbonyl. They, they, they could have you start earlier on. They could have you show how the nitrogen attacks the 1,3 dicarbonyl, or they could even have you show how to make the thalamide in the first place. But we, we talked about some of those preliminary steps last time. So let's move on then to the Strecker synthesis. What was this Gabrielle synthesis for? We were using the Gabrielle synthesis here to make amino acids. Earlier, we learned how we can use the Gabrielle synthesis just to make amines in general. But now we're specializing it to amino acids. And now we're going to go over the Strecker synthesis, which is just for amino acids. 
structure synthesis is specifically for making amino acids. Pardon me? This one does it for secondary? Oh, does it? I wasn't uh, aware that that was really uh, the key here. Really? Now, um, I suppose you could though. That's right. You could add uh, a, uh, so this would be a way to make an amino acid with a secondary beta carbon. That's right. That's not an issue to talk about in the textbook, but is that something that your instructor talked about in class? No, in the textbook when we got to questions, it was like, propose a synthesis of all these amino acids and some preferred strikers right. because it was ah. secondary. Right, okay. I hadn't thought about that, but that's a good point, yeah. So we'll see that this would be a good way to make an amino acid where the beta carbon is secondary. Now to start with, Synthesis, we have to do a review of something from earlier chapters. Do you know what would happen here? We won't go through the mechanism, we'll just say what the product would be. Um, a carboxylic acid. Good. How many carbons will the carboxylic acid have? One. How many carbons total will there be in the molecule? Four. Four, that's right. So this is, remember what type of functional group do we have here? Nitro. A nitrile. Not nitro, but nitrile. This is a nitrile. Remember that the CN really looks like this. It's really a C triple bonded to a nitrogen. So this is nitrile hydrolysis. Remember that nitriles are also considered carboxylic acid derivatives, even though they don't look like the other derivatives. So they also hydrolyze the carboxylic acids. To be specific, the nitrile carbon becomes a carboxy carbon. This is going to turn the nitrile carbon into a carboxy carbon. It doesn't turn this carbon into the carboxy carbon. It turns the actual nitrile carbon into a carboxy carbon. So we should have the same number of carbons that we started with. So we won't bother about the mechanism here. This could be either acid or base catalyzed, but for the structure synthesis, we'll focus on the acid catalyzed approach, and I think this needs heat. So um, cyanides can be hydrolyzed. Why is that interesting? Well, what does it take to make an amino acid? To make an amino acid, basically you should think about what do I need to attach to the alpha carbon? We well, need to attach an amino group, you need to attach a carboxy group, and you need to attach a side chain. If we can attach the amino group, the carboxy group, and the side chain, we'll be able to make an amino acid. Well, now we've seen how to make the carboxy group. This is a good way to make your carboxy group. So we'll be using that trick in the striker synthesis. So now we're going to go through a striker synthesis. We're going to be making this carbon into the alpha carbon. And you might label it alpha already, although that would be confusing because it's not an alpha carbon yet. But maybe I'll say uh, it's going to be this alpha number one carbon. So this is going to be our number one carbon over here. Um, and if this is going to be the alpha carbon, then this would be the side chain over here. So do you recognize this would be alanine, one of the simpler amino acids? So we've already started with an alpha carbon, or what will be an alpha carbon attached to the number two. So what, what is there left to do? Well, now we need to attach an amino group to the number one carbon, and we need to attach the carboxy group to the number one carbon. Well, do you recognize what would be the product from this reaction? Mm -hmm. We won't go through, sorry. Yeah, my, no, my own, my so, but yeah, let's draw that product. Oh, we won't go through the mechanism, but let's draw the product from this first step. Ah, close. This will just be an imine. I guess if it was very acidic conditions, it might uh, protonate, but this is just an acid catalyst. We're going to be adding the acid in catalytic amounts. If you think back, this was one of this was our category three attack on aldehydes and ketones. We saw that ammonia and primary amines do a category three attack on aldehydes and ketones, which gives us an imine. And we usually think of the, the acid being regenerated, so this will simply be a neutral amine here. So now we've made this into an amine. Are we getting closer to the amino acid? Yes, because now the number one is attached to a nitrogen, which we wanted it to be all along, but it's not the right type of nitrogen, so we'll have to do some more work. 
Now we also need to put in the carboxycarbon. I guess I could call this the number two, the carboxycarbon. Notice that this did not turn out to be the carboxycarbon. That was the number one. Wasn't number two the side chain? And number two was going to be our side chain. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. That's right. I should have left that in. 